Hello everyone, welcome back. In our previous tutorials, we discussed all the superficial muscles of the anterior compartment of forearm individually. So now let's have a quick overview of these muscles. So the superficial muscles of anterior forearm are a group of these four muscles located in the anterior compartment of forearm also called the flexor compartment of forearm and these are the most superficial muscles in this compartment of forearm and that's why these are named as the superficial flexors of forearm these muscles include the flexor carpi ulnaris palmaris longus flexor carpi radialis and the pronator teres muscle in a medial to lateral direction these muscles share a common origin on the common flexor tendon that arises from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And the majority of these muscles are innervated by the median nerve except for the flexor carpi ulnaris which is innervated by the ulnar nerve. So now we will have a look at the important anatomical features of these muscles. So the flexor carpi ulnaris is this fusiform muscle located in the superficial flexor compartment of our forearm. And it's the most medial of all the superficial flexors of our forearm. This muscle has got two heads of origin, a small humeral head and a large ulnar head. The humeral head, as you can see, originates through the common flexor tendon from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. While the ulnar head originates from the posterior medial aspects of both the proximal two-thirds of the body and the olecranon of the ulna. These two heads then converge to form a single muscle belly which travels inferiorly towards the hand. And this muscle belly then inserts through a long tendon onto the pisiform bone. This insertion site is further extended from the pisiform bone to the palmar aspect of the hook of the hemet and the palmar aspect of the base of the fifth metacarpal bone. If we study the actions of the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle, so this muscle acts through its tendon of insertion on the pisiform bone and the base of the fifth metacarpal bone to perform two main functions which are the flexion of the hand at the wrist or the radiocarpal joint and the adduction of the hand at the wrist joint. In terms of the innervation, the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle is supplied by the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve originates from the medial cord of the brachial plexus. The nerve fibers for the ulnar nerve are derived from the anterior rami of 7th and 8th cervical and 1st thoracic spinal nerve roots. The ulnar nerve after arising from the medial cord of the brachial plexus passes through the ulnar groove posterior to the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And after passing through the ulnar groove, it then passes between the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle to run anteriorly to this muscle and here it gives off branches to this muscle. The flexor carpi ulnaris muscle receives its arterial supply from the ulnar artery. The ulnar artery supplies the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle by giving off a small branch called the posterior ulnar recurrent artery and the ulnar artery itself arises from the brachial artery. Now if we just move on to the second muscle of this group, the palmaris longus muscle which is this thin fusiform muscle and it lies just lateral to the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle. So the palmaris longus muscle originates through the common flexor tendon from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And after origin from the medial epicondyle, the fibers of the palmaris longus muscle travel inferiorly towards the hand. 
and these fibers then insert through a long tendon onto the palmar aponeurosis and the flexor retinaculum of the hand. Now, if we study the actions of the palmaris longus muscle, so this muscle performs an important action and it flexes the hand at the wrist joint, also called the radiocarpal joint. Along with flexion of the hand at the wrist, the palmaris longus muscle also stabilizes the palmar aponeurosis, which is not shown in this model. The palmaris longus muscle receives its nerve supply from the median nerve. The median nerve arises from both the medial and lateral cords of the brachial plexus. And this nerve has got its nerve fibers arising from the 7th and 8th cervical spinal nerve roots. In terms of the arterial supply of this muscle, so the palmaris longus muscle receives its arterial supply from the ulnar artery. The ulnar artery supplies the palmaris longus muscle by giving off this branch called the anterior ulnar recurrent artery. Now let's move on to the third muscle of this group, which just like its fellow muscles is a fusiform shaped muscle. And this muscle is the flexor carpi radialis muscle. And it lies further lateral to the palmaris longus muscle. Now if we study the origin of the flexor carpi radialis muscle, so this muscle originates through the common flexor tendon from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And after origin from the medial epicondyle, the tendon of origin forms a fusiform shaped muscle belly, which travels inferolaterally towards the hand. And this muscle belly then inserts through a long tendon onto the palmar aspects of the bases of the second and third metacarpal bones. Now if we study the actions of the flexor carpi radialis muscle, so as its name suggests, this muscle is a flexor and it flexes the hand at the radiocorpal joint, also called the wrist joint. And this muscle also abducts the hand at the radiocarpal and midcarpal joints. The flexor carpi radialis muscle receives its innervation from the median nerve. The flexor carpi radialis muscle receives its arterial supply from two arteries, the radial artery and the posterior ulnar recurrent artery. The posterior ulnar recurrent artery arises as a posterior branch from the ulnar artery. And the ulnar artery together with the radial artery arise as medial and lateral divisions of the brachial artery respectively. And now the last muscle of this group, which is the most lateral one, is this muscle, the pronator teres muscle. And so the other superficial flexors lie medial to this muscle. The lateral margin of the pronator teres muscle forms the medial boundary of this triangular anatomical area called the cubital fossa. So the pronator teres muscle has got two heads of origin, a superficial humeral head and a deep ulnar head. The humeral head originates through the common flexor tendon from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. While the ulnar head lies deep to the humeral head and it originates from the medial aspect of the coronoid process of the ulna. These two heads then converge to form a single muscle belly which travels inferolaterally to insert through a flat tendon onto the anterolateral aspect of the middle third of the radial shaft. The function of the pronator teres muscle is to pronate the forearm together with the pronator quadratus muscle at the proximal and distal radio ulnar joints. 
and this muscle also assists the biceps brachii the brachialis and other forearm flexors in flexing the forearm at the elbow joint the pronate arteries muscle receives its nerve supply from the median nerve the median nerve passes between the two heads of the pronate arteries muscle to enter the anterior compartment of forearm the pronate arteries muscle receives its arterial supply from two main arteries these are the brachial artery and the ulnar artery the brachial artery supplies the pronate arteries muscle by giving off this small branch called the inferior ulnar collateral artery while the ulnar artery supplies this muscle by giving off this branch called the anterior ulnar recurrent artery these two branches that is the anterior ulnar recurrent artery and the inferior ulnar collateral artery form an astomosis around the elbow joint so that's a brief tutorial on the superficial flexors of forearm hope this was helpful thank you so much